Welcome. I'm filming the Apple Find X2 Pro, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, starting straight off, we're gonna go into the settings and then display to find the refresh rate. So, display and brightness, and let's see, it's uh, under more. We have the where is it, screen refresh rate. It looks to be set to uh, auto, but we can change it to 120 uh, or 60. Now, the difference between those two, um, unfortunately, Apple doesn't give you like any kind of nice animation to showcase this off, so I'm gonna try to explain it in a way that hopefully people will understand. So imagine a screen refresh rate as a slideshow. By default, um, basically almost every device normally has a 60 hertz refresh rate, meaning uh, in a single second you will see 60 different images. So when you're moving from point A to B on a screen, so for instance scrolling, uh, throw that scroll if it's going one second, it's 60 frames uh, that's going to be displayed. If you change it to 120, well, then you have twice as much content being shown uh, in, on the screen, making it look way smoother than uh, the 60. And I'm gonna maybe try to show this off. So right now it's at 60, and by scrolling up and down, you can, uh, I'm doing it quickly. Uh, it's not really doing it quickly, just so we can see the, uh, the way the text it jumps around. It's kind of like, well, not very good looking, right? You can kind of see, you don't really see the smooth motion, you just kind of see different images of it, like text being just stuck in single places, right? But if we go change it to, where was it, display? If we change it to 120, uh, you should start seeing a bit of a smoother motion to it. So let's go back here and you can see that the text, you don't really see that the text kind of like it was before. Uh, now, unfortunately, the camera is recording at 60, so everything past this, it's not really recorded, so you don't really get the full experience of what 120 hertz uh, is doing to the screen. Um, but you can, you can already kind of see the way I'm scrolling up and down, it is just kind of like a smooth motion. There is no, uh, almost like a slideshow feeling to it. Now, obviously, this is gonna look in person way, way better than it does on the camera. So I highly recommend you to just try both of them, uh, see the differences. And then at the end of the day, if you don't like it, you, I would say set it to um, 60 because that will give you a little bit more battery life. Uh, but if you feel that the extra or reduced battery life is, uh, is a worth trade-off, then I do recommend you to go with the 120. It just makes the entire phone feel so much better. Now, moving on to the next option, it's gonna be the screen color mode, which is kind of self-explanatory. Again, it's in the same place, so under display and more, you have screen color mode. And by default, it is gonna be always on basically almost every phone set to vivid. Now, vivid in certain cases doesn't look too great in my opinion. So as you can see right here, uh, these colors right here are a little bit, in my opinion, too saturated. They're almost like glowing. We do have a couple additional ways. Uh, so you can choose whichever one you want now. It looks like there is also uh, a mode that is even more saturated than the Vivid one. So this one is just taken to a whole new extreme level. Uh, but for the majority of us, uh, if you like Vivid, then it's all fine. If you find it a little bit too saturated, then you can change it to uh, Gentle, which will reduce the, the saturation of it a little bit and make it look a little bit more accurate. Now moving on to the next option, uh, it's gonna be the Ultra Vision Engine. And now it's again in a display, but it is right here. And the name doesn't really describe what it does exactly. So once you tap on here and enable it, you can see that there's two additional things. So it makes uh, standard content, so non-HDR content and that doesn't have high dynamic range. Uh, it will basically convert it into high dynamic range uh, to make it look a little bit better on the AMOLED display. And additionally, uh, it will also uh, try to smooth out the video, uh, boost its frame rate to uh, 60 frames from the typical uh, 24. So for instance, if you're watching a movie, uh, movies are almost exclusively, uh, maybe with an exclusion of couple uh, specific titles, almost exclusively at 20, what is it? I think four frames uh, always. Uh, so this will boost it into 60. Now, 
in normal circumstances, this is a really nice option. Uh, I personally do prefer 60 frames almost in everything. Uh, in movies, though, it might sometimes look a little bit wonky. So it starts looking almost fake, unrealistic, uh, kind of like a soap opera. So it is going to be up to you if you like this, this specific uh, toggle or not. If you don't, if you find it, if you find that it makes the content look a little bit worse in terms of movies specifically, then by all means just disable it. But the conversion from uh, st standard dynamic range to high dynamic range is a fairly decent one. So moving on to the next option, it's going to be the gesture navigation to well, make the screen look a little bit nicer and overly the navigation of the device feel a little bit better. So to enable this, we're going to go into convenience tools in our settings right over here, navigation, and from here you'll have swipe gestures from both sides. And it does give you this animation right here, how to use this or how to navigate through your device. Uh, I'm going to just show you. It might be a little bit easier to see it actually in action. So uh, as you can see, you have you don't have the buttons anymore. So to go back, as you usually did with the back button, what you have to do now is swipe from the side. As you can see, it will bring up in an arrow like that from either side. Now this works to a specific point on the screen. I believe it's somewhere like along here. If you try to swipe from all the way top, it won't work. That is so um, certain applications that have this panel that you can pull from the side. And that is so you can actually still pull it out instead of going back. Now, unfortunately for me, it is a little bit difficult uh, to swipe from the uh, from no, the back gestures because of this uh, screen protector that isn't necessarily curving along the glass. So I can basically grab the screen protection here. Uh, it does make it really difficult to to swipe. Uh, but the uh, the home gesture and the recent gesture is still fairly easy. So uh, to go home, basically swipe up. Let me just raise the phone. There we go. So just a simple swipe up. And then if you want to go to recent, you swipe up and hold. And this will go to recent. Now, additionally, I will give you a little tweak or tip. Uh, if you have never used gesture navigation, uh, when you're trying to go home or into recent, uh, try not to swipe on the screen up, but start the swipe off of the screen. This will basically ensure that, um, that the home gesture or well, that basically back or home uh, recent gesture uh, will work uh, correctly. This is a fairly subtle tip, but it helps a great deal. And now moving on to the last option, it's going to be the smart sidebar. Now. I can barely see it because of the uh, screen protection protection right here, but I believe it's right here. Let me just try it out. Yep, that is the screen protection, or not screen protection, but the uh, smart sidebar. So, um, if you've already seen it uh, and you know what it does, then I don't really have much to say, but basically when you pull it out outside by a simple kind of flick, uh, it will bring up a couple different shortcuts, which you can edit, uh, also have settings and, well, several uh, several applications which you can launch from here you can also add more if you want to uh, and also if you grab it like this as you can see it becomes uh, you can move it around you can also move it to the other side if you don't want it on this side so you can basically choose where it is located at and additionally if you just don't like the uh, the smart smart sidebar at all you can simply remove it by going into the convenience tools and finding smart sidebar and from here you can either change the transparency you have several different options right here but if you want to disable it you just do this when it's gone uh, but additionally if you want to use it but you want to maybe uh, change it a little bit you can change the transparency of it as you can see right now it is a little bit more visible i can make it basically completely invisible so you do need to remember where it is uh, we can also a floating bar on full screen, uh, recent apps. So this recent apps, basically when you, you get it, it will show you apparently recent apps right here, which I believe is this uh, top section right here. Now we also should be able to add apps to here, but I don't seem to remember how to do it. Oh, there we go. We do actually have the scroll option and from here we can add more apps. 
uh, along with different tools. So we have voice, voice recording, we can remove the ones that are already here, and we can add any kind of app that we want to from our app list. So, that being said, this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks I wanted to share. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.